<laughs> Yo, Sir. we back. We live. What's yes. the deal? What's the deal, y'all? How y'all feeling? I'm good. Can you get amazing? It? How you feeling, man? Oh, let me hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Shai said, I want y'all to really see what's going on here. What's the deal? Yeah, yeah, it's advancing, man. What you mean? Of course it is. Of course it is. Oh, uh, that's exceptional. What you got on, my brother? Where, where you finna go after this? You say yeah. you, missed, you missed that that cold weather in that New York. It's April Fools. Happy April first. Stop playing, y'all. Stop playing. It's April not fools. It ain't, it ain't made for that. Stop playing. This is not a joke. Some people have been fools all year. That's a oh, fact. That's, we'll say, that's a, a truth bomb. Number one, they Let's are go. fools, and some of them have been tricked and tricked on. But um, <laughs> trick that's, or treat. That's neither here nor there. You know how that go. <laughs> Early one. You know how that go. Trick mm -hmm. or treat vibes. That's a fact. That's a fact, man. Welcome back. Happy Monday. Happy, Happy Easter Monday. Monday to all my West Indians. Hopefully you had a, a nice Resurrection Sunday and uh, you got your, your bun and cheese with a little bit of tea. Sometimes you got to have some tea with it. Have some tea with it. Sure, for sure. So big week. Um, Earn Your Leisure episode coming out tomorrow. And then we got uh, Blackout on Wednesday at 10 o'clock. Yes. We have Miss April Mason. Yes, 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 yes. She's the first uh, female that we've ever had on Blackout. And had a dope conversation about, you know, feminine energy, submissive women, fostering an environment for, you know, um, that feminine energy. So it was, it was dope. We, we covered so wow, many man. different topics. And uh, it was a very interesting conversation, to say the least. So check that out on Wednesday at 10 o'clock for sure. And... Uh, yeah. Oh, thank you to Don Peebles also. Incredible. Taught an amazing class for I'm us. Glad I missed that, EYO University. You know, just a very smart guy, man. And then he actually answered questions for 20 minutes from uh from an earnest. So uh yeah. shout out to and That's then we incredible. spoke we spoke afterwards. <laughs> we spoke afterwards for another 20 minutes. Anytime you get a chance to oh, talk to it? a millionaire, you gotta you gotta seize the moment. Yeah. So uh we we spoke afterwards for 20 minutes about politics, about business, the about economy. Miami, about a variety of different things. That was Anything good. politically you can tell us in the, from the conversation? Well, if you Google, if you Google his name, um, and you can see the most recent articles on him, which from last week, it's been a few of them published last week. You can you can uh, see his views about the current political landscape. I'll say that. Yeah, you can see his views about the current political landscape. So it's, it's on public record. It is public record. It's public knowledge. I will say this, Ian, being that I was there, um, it was it was great dialogue to be a part of, and more information was given to some of the information that we had already received, mm -hmm. and um, you know maybe some things were swayed, maybe opinions were swayed, uh, maybe minds were changed just a bit, um, but we'll see. It was it was an interesting conversation to say the least, and it's coming from a guy with a depth of knowledge, not only inside of real estate, but he actually started in politics in DC with uh, former mayor, uh, rest in peace, uh, Marion Barry. So really, okay. This, yeah, this is this is a guy who knows what he's talking about. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, and like I said, anytime you get a chance to have an opportunity to talk to a billionaire, make sure you have something to say, that's important. So uh, I had to run some things by him. <laughs> but um, <laughs> shout out to dumb peoples, man. <laughs> And uh, my class, I will, I will be teaching a class at EY University this Saturday, right? Yep, this Saturday. This Saturday, yep. I'm back. I'm mm -hmm. back in the flesh. When Troy's class is next week. My class is this week. So yep. we back we back up and running. And uh, get your tickets to InvestFest. That's the last yes, thing I'll please. say about that. We got some, I'm working behind the scenes on some things. Um, just know. Just know. It's the maestro vibes. These things don't happen by luck. We don't cohort with billionaires by luck. Look, had a couple mishaps with a few billionaires, but it happens. And the, even with that, to both them, <laughs> it was good for the conference. Are you going to just let it live? Man? <laughs> no, no, I got to defend. Listen, any, anybody who got a podcast, it's hard to book them on a Zoom, let alone to get them to fly in and come and speak. That's a like, fact. It's true. Come on, it's we're true. not going to take that part away. That's a fact, man. Yeah. Looking back on the yearbook, you never know what can happen when you look back on your high school yearbook, man. It's going to be some people that, you know, stumbled. Yeah. I'll say this too. Before y'all get to clipping it up, 50, make sure you send that licensing fee over. I don't want to see no blue background. Send that licensing fee over, my boy. What you mean licensing fee? What you mean? 
I mean, y'all got one of the last ones. Oh, 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 oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, y'all get the clipping up and the eye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amy. <laughs> we we <laughs> reserve the rights. We reserve the rights. Right. Oh, hey. Docu, if a docu-series comes docu out, series, we, we reserve the rights. That's yeah. what <laughs> <laughs> well, you survive anything, <laughs> that wire over <laughs> by Monday. Uh, uh, Amy, Amy, pick up your phone. Immediately. Pick up your phone. Uh, okay. <laughs> nah, man, man. That's wild. That's uh, wild. Oh, man. All right. Um, yeah, uh, any announcements on your behalf? Yes. Any earners after you are done with Rashad's call, Stock Club call would be at 3 p.m. Central. Your call is at what, 11? Uh, 12? I think 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock. Yeah. So double dose of, of learning and earning. And um, if you want to know what to invest in long term, short term, what to get into the market, how to get rich from the stock market, join the stock club. Go to ianinvest.com um, and join us there. Uh, we had an amazing call this past Saturday. Uh, I went over how to fall back in love with trading if you've been losing over the last couple months um, and what to do how, and how to play this divergence between what's happening in the luxury market and the S&P 500. So if I've made you money, please put yes in chat, ianinvest.com. I appreciate everybody who's joined, but let's run it up second quarter, third quarter. Let's get rich. And I love you all dearly. That's a fact. Shout out to Zan in the back. We're just not going to act like he's not Chilling. sitting there. <laughs> yeah. Boss vibes. <laughs> oh. Godfather vibes, yo. That's a fact, man. Shout out to everybody that is locked in. You know how this works. You must. You must. This is a disclaimer. You must do your own research. It's very important you do that. All right. Our content is intended to be used and must be used for informational purposes only. It's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances. You should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you hear on our show and wish to rely upon whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. Mm -hmm. Please continue to do the research when you find out it's great research. Give credit to the person you found it from. Share it. Show love. And that's how we go together, y'all. Can we show some love to that jacket? Let's go. That's that that's, that's that that's that 112 <laughs> <laughs> remix video. <laughs> Got you. 96 edition. You hurt? Let's go. Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. Hot date tonight. <laughs> you don't Black, Troy, put your hoodie on. <laughs> what's the ambiance you said and what's the vibe walk us through like uh, can, can you take us from dm to date dm to date Ooh, Ooh, what, i like that right? that's like a that's that, that's a segment that's right blackout. there that's blackout dm the date that's good mm, that's good that's, that's, good. that's, that's good that's a oh, click funnel. yeah let's 20, collaborate 99 the days of surfing is over you just can't surfing in no more 29.99 yeah. um okay let's start this off with uh sam bankman Free. Wow. Um, sentenced to 25 years. Yeah. If not 25 years. So on the wake up. That's a fact. Uh, 25 fact. years. But what is the big, what's the biggest lesson from this? FTX, scam, whatever you want to call it, misappropriation of funds, however you want to categorize it. Um, you know, billions of dollars gone. Right. Um, so what, what can we learn from this situation? Um, I think the biggest lesson is to be honorable, operate with integrity. And then when it comes to other people's finances, um, don't lie. I, I think he had a chance to be crypto's Buffett. And I think even if he would have been honest about some of those losses at that time, I think he would have had enough people support him and come back in where he could have raised the capital again and he would have been A-OK. -okay. But when you start lying about the number of trades you're taking, how well you're doing, I think uh, this year and next will be like the, the year of integrity and those who were doing nefarious things, they'll step to the wayside. But I think the biggest lesson is just to be honorable and deliver on what you're supposed to do. Um, and that's it. And, and eventually, no matter how good the scheme may seem, and we saw this with Madoff as well, no matter how uh, magical the returns may seem, if it's not true, it's going to get revealed. Um, going back to that quote, my dad, a lie is only good so the truth shows up. You can't finagle people forever and think you're going to get away with it. So for all of my traders, investors, if you haven't had your moment yet, continue to work on your craft. And I, even from this standpoint, imagine how much money he could have made if he was actually giving those returns out. In crypto, it's easy to do 30% in a quarter. Like if you would have hit those marks, seeing what the value of like the BlackRock ETF BlackRock may not have had room to even have the ETF. It would have went through him. 
Um, so operate with integrity, be the best at your craft, and then all the riches will come from there, but you can't shortcut your way there. But what do you guys think is the biggest lesson? I don't know. Is, is this one of these, you know, we talk about casino all the time, like, and Jay says that famous line, should have stayed in food and beverage. When when you had something that was working before it became, obviously, what it ended up being with, with yeah. millions of people being defrauded, the greed, the arrogance, all plays into it, right? When you start doing things that are uncommon to your lane, right? They started naming it NBA arenas, right? You started seeing more commercials. Had he stayed at the fundamental discipline of, of what he was intended to do, it doesn't look like this. Yeah. But you take into account the age of the person, right? What I mean, how 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 do you respond when you're up billions of dollars and you haven't hit thirty yet? Mm -hmm. Right. It's, it's tough to really try to conceptualize that because how many people that we know get into that position? Um, but even the team around them, right? Like I think that that's a a valuable lesson too, right? The first people. Once things were going wrong, they knew it was wrong, right? Yeah. And it was just a matter of time before they cracked. I think, you know, obviously Carolyn Ellison, who was his girlfriend at the time, was the, the person who actually blew the whistle, um, pled guilty to a bunch of charges and took a lesser charge. But yeah, at that point, like, you know, it's wrong from the beginning, right? Absolutely. Uh, I mean, but I mean, this is this is the I guess we can call it American greed, but this is greed, age, arrogance, uh, and not staying in your lane. I think th all those things coming together at once, uh, this is how it plays out. Now, now 25 years is what he's faced with, which is, That's I don't steep. know, I, I, it's steep. Is it steep enough? Nah, 25 is different, bro. They get, yeah, I mean, yeah, even my guy Drew said it. He like, I remember, shout out to Drew, he like, I remember when white collar crime was five to 10 years. Yeah, 25. Yeah, 25 true. off the rip. They wanted 47 years. We're talking about 29 billion. 25 different, bro. 29 billion? I agree, but also too hypothetically, if I ran a hedge fund, yeah, and I wanted to now be the safety zone for crypto, throw the book at him, make him the fall guy, and then I come out with an ETF as a signal of safety. Once again, I can't come into the media space and say I'm going to take everything over from everyone. At some point. HBO Max or Netflix, uh, somebody's going to get mad. Even when I go on my little, little rants about who I may not like or Adam 22, I'll pick someone who can't topple my career, though. He was gunning at all the banks, all the institutions, and everyone yeah. in crypto. That's the arrogance. That's the air. You can't shoot at everybody and expect no one to shoot back. Yeah. I mean, they, they thought he was going to get six. Six years? Yeah, they thought. Well, his 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 team, his lawyer, uh, lawyers thought that they were shooting for six years. Right. When the judge, I'm sure when, they'll appeal. They'll, they'll appeal. I'm sure they're gonna appeal. When the judge, yeah. I mean, when I read That's the transcript, the all he yeah. kept saying was he, all he could hear uh, was Carolyn Ellison's uh, recant the stories of how they knew it was wrong. They knew it was wrong, and ultimately, him listening to her testify is what made him give him that that sentence of 25 years. Yeah, twenty five years different, bro. I, I don't know how. To... I'm not wishing that on anybody. You said yeah. you said it, I don't know if it's it, enough. It, I'm asking. It, no, I don't know. The, the, the victims of it will probably say maybe it's not. I don't. You're know. supposed to get life in jail for stealing money. How, how much time? Made up? Yeah. What made up guy? That's more time than a murder. What made up guy? But he was he was ninety years old anyway. He wasn't ninety when he got arrested. How old was he? He was in the sixties. When he get no, he wasn't. No, he was. He had to be sixty. He he made off got one hundred and fifty years. But I actually, thought it was 180. How, how, how old was he when he got arrested? Ask Chad GBT how old he was. Nah, I'm to run now. In, in the meantime, well, put it in chat. How how much time do you think is appropriate for him to get for uh, embezzlement? He's 71. 71? When he got 70, arrested? 71. 71. So it's like no matter what you give him, it's it a life sentence. Anyway, right? Yeah, you give, you give him 10 years, it's a life sentence. They gave him 150, though. That's crazy. But I'm just, he died in jail after t before 10, like at least. 11, he died 10 years after. Yeah. yeah. So, or whatever you gave him, he was going to die in jail. But I'm just saying, you you give somebody that's 30 years old. I, well, I mean, if he took if it was 29 billion dollar loss a year per billion, they you couldn't give him six. They could not. Like his, his legal team, you're delusional. You're going to end up on a Boeing plane if you get that boy six years. <laughs> like you can't have this kind of going into an election. A person who took that much money, you're going to give him six years and let him go back to the Bahamas and hang out with Andrew Schultz and Duval? No. Nah. What What do you think she gets sentenced to, right? His, his co-defendant. She pled guilty to two counts of wire fraud, 
two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud, conspiracy to commit conspiracy to commit uh, commodities fraud, conspiracies to commit securities fraud, and conspiracy to commit money laundering. What do you think she gets for cooperating? She may get seven. Seven? Yeah. What do you think? I mean, if she cooperated, then she probably get Yeah, she called, She made the case. Yeah. He won't afford Takashi. What's the point of ratting if you're going to go to jail? Do, do 20 with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Biggest, just I think mastery of crafts. Can we agree there's no shortcuts? I mean, even like when I be like doing my review videos in like the media space, I'll see some views spike up to 900,000, but it's like you got 3,000 followers. Like there's no shortcut. If he would have just focused on trading less, even an arbitrage play when he was like, I was buying Bitcoin in Asia and then swapping it over to the United States. Like he didn't have to do all that lying. He could have just been a crypto darling just off getting 30% return a quarter. That's still beating all the ETFs and indexes. And with the rate Bitcoin was running, yeah, the gains were already baked in. Yeah, but he, when the, the ceiling crashed in is when obviously Bitcoin pulled back. Yeah. Right. It, it wasn't when it was on this run to 70, which I mean, if the timing was different, who knows if he's even stopped. Right. Yeah. But B Bitcoin pulled back. You know how this goes when when everything crashes, people are like, where's the money? Where's the I money? mean, but if he's trading, he, he should have been able to at least short because the future was available. So he should have been at least That's true. hedge or short and make up. But I think sometimes no matter how much money you have. When you try and dig yourself out of a loss and you don't know how many trades you're going to take per year. And I know people hate when I give that advice, but I'm like, it's the same with a casino. Like they know if you trade more than a hundred times in a year, that's going to be in their favor. They're going to eat you up on fees. Great. But the losses are going to mount up and they know that you trade more once you get into a hole as well. So I think it's just a great exercise and like not, nothing is new under the sun. Every fund is went under for the same reason, over trading, being arrogant. Um, having too high of a percentage gain that you want to get clients, like just stay in a sweet spot, get in and get out, be consistent. But at, but even in all of these fallouts, BlackRock is the greatest benefiter of him going to jail. Like Larry is a captain for Bitcoin now. I haven't heard him promise 1% gain yet. It's about safety first and investing. Please put that in chat. Safety first. I know y'all be hating Rashad. Conservative takes. A conservative 25% is better than a potential 1,000% and you blow up your account. This is a safe place to invest. Yep. Makes sense. Yep. All right. So let's, so I want to, I want to, um, I want to give some, uh, a quick nugget if I can. So we posted this on Instagram last week and it got a lot of traction. Um, we said this before, uh, MG, the mortgage guy, but I had heard this when I was actually a financial advisor. This is one of the things that I, I picked up when I was a financial advisor, as far as like, you know, help helping people save money. So um put on I made a tweet how to save two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Oh wow okay it was um if you make one extra mortgage payment a year, right? On, on your mortgage, that cuts seven years off your mortgage, roughly. So if you have a if you have a seven hundred thousand dollar mortgage, just using this as an example, um and seven percent interest rate, the interest rate right now average is over seven, so that's very reasonable uh, for a thirty year mortgage, your monthly payment is forty four thousand six hundred and fifty seven dollars. So if you make one extra payment of four thousand six hundred and fifty seven dollars a year, um that cuts the mortgage by seven years, and in return, you mm -hmm. save two hundred and forty nine thousand dollars on interest. That is insane. So, and then you can kind of play around with the numbers. If it's three hundred thousand, then it'll be a hundred and nine thousand dollars that you'll save on interest, right? But the whole point is that it's a it's a hack that if you if you pay one extra payment a year, it has to be credited towards the principal. Mm -hmm. um, if you pay one extra payment a year, credited towards the principal, then you will cut seven years off your mortgage. If you make two extra payments a year then you'll cut 14 years off your mortgage, right? So you could literally have a 30 year mortgage and cut it down to a 15 year mortgage without having, you know, locked in at a 15 year mortgage. Cause one year you might not be able to make two extra payments. Right. But it's just, yeah. it's just, and a lot of times people say like, well, where are you going to get the extra money from? Well, you might get a, a end of the year bonus. You might get a tax refund. Um, you might get a variety of different things, or maybe it's a thing where you just put a couple hundred dollars a month into a fund where now that's the pay off your mortgage fund, right? Pay, pay your mortgage off early fund. But, um, 
That's job. Right. Yeah, it's just a quick little hack mm -hmm. that um, people a lot of times don't even think. Most people don't even think about something like that, right? A little, a little thing like that could potentially yeah. save you two hundred and fifty, two hundred, a quarter million dollars in interest. Now, what what could you do with an additional quarter million dollars? A lot of things. If you watch Market Mondays, you can you can invest yeah. it. You can buy an, another home, another re a rental property for that amount, right? Uh, you can you know put your kid through college. You could do a variety of different things. So be stress free. It's yeah. true. So yeah. uh, that's something that, like I said, I put it on Instagram and it was a little hack. I mean, we can do that like more often on Market Mondays. Just provide like, like little that. little tidbits of information yeah. that um you can use in, in, in your tool belt. And um, yeah, figure, figure out this thing. Yeah, I think the most important thing, that's an amazing hack. The most important thing is that you make sure that, because this is like a lot of people have their mortgages on auto pay, right? It automatically comes out of their account. That won't happen, right? You actually have to write a check and put principal payment. Principal, on. Oh, yes, please. please. Yes. Because if not, it, it's not going to work that way. So make sure that when you write the check, it says principal payment only. Yeah. yeah, For sure. Very important. All right. Now, let's talk about nearly 40% of all trading days in Q1 were record closing highs for the S&P 500, which is the most since... 2013. Mm -hmm. um, so what advice would you give to anyone who missed out on this record breaking quarter that we just finished? Number one, I think you need to remember that the market, especially the S&P 500 is permanently rigged to stay up. Uh, people always ask me, is there market manipulation going on? And I say yes, every single day, especially when it comes to S&P and NASDAQ, because it's the, the main two indexes that we're putting money into. Number two, decide how much money you're going to put in every month, whether that's 250, 500, 1,000, 2,000 or more um, per month. And then thirdly, block out a lot of the negative news around crashes, the market falling apart. Like if the market does crash, great. It's a better buying opportunity. But I think sometimes here, like Robert Kiyosaki um, and people that are like doom and gloomers, it will cause people not to dollar cost averaging every month. And then you look up the quarter ends and then you're like, we, we had a record month, but not enough shares were bought. Um, if you look, we started at 466 and now we're at uh, 5304 on a S and P future. Like that's incredible growth for the S and P 500. So make sure to buy every month no matter what anyone else is saying, because if nothing else, the S&P is not going to crash. And if so, you're going to see it all over the news. It'll be on Stephen A. Smith, Pat McAfee, <laughs> ABC, Oprah going to talk about like special news. You'll see it everywhere. But I think one of the things that we forget is that they'll tell us to buy everything else on sale, but assets that really matter. Mm -hmm. So we can continue to buy every single month. Amazing quarter for those of you who have been trading it and holding it long term. Congrats. But we've had a record run up. I mean, even if um, if you go back to twenty, back to October, I mean, it was at thirty six oh four in October of twenty two. Now we're at fifty three oh four for an index fund. Mm -hmm. Hold for the long term. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna add more color to this because this is interesting. If we we want to like peel back a little bit, there have been seven times in the past since nineteen seventy five that the S&P has gone on a five month win streak. So we just ended March, uh, the yep. first quarter obviously, but this has happened seven times where it's going on a, a five month win streak over 25%, right? So it's it's increased by 25%. First time was in 75, what well, happened twice in 75, happened in 82, happened in 86, uh, happened in January of 99, uh, August of 2009, April of 2020. And now March of 2024, it ended at 24.6. So I guess we can count that as seven. Yeah. Now, in those seven times that that has happened, I know people are saying missed out. I'll, I'll use different language. I'll say that they didn't participate in this first quarter. Yeah. And the seven times that it has done that, that five-month win streak and it has appreciated over 25%, in the six months following, it's only gone down once. And so a lot of people are, hey, is it going to pull back? Is, is this the time to get it? It's only one time, and it was like by 0.1%, and that was in 1986. Yeah. Obviously, we know what happened in 1987. Um, so historically, when we see a win streak like this, and we look at the momentum, and I'm glad we had uh, JC on to talk about the charts. Yep. Follow momentum, follow the trend, block out the noise, block out the news, right? Because it's now that we've hit 
when we hit four months, it was like, all right, well, there's a pullback coming. It can't happen five. Now we're at five, and it's like, ah, it's five. It can't be six. Will there be a pullback at some point? Sure. 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 But the fact that if you didn't participate in the first three months doesn't mean you should not participate in the second and definitely by the end of the year. Historically, from what we, what the market has done, six almost 100% of the time, if it's gone up 25% in the five-month streak, by the end of the year, it has also gone up. Absolutely. Also, you can look at the inflows, which means how much money hedge funds are putting into the S and P 500. When they get to record low outflows, that's a good time to buy. So that's a gem you can write down, buy when the outflows are at record lows. But I mean, this has been on a tear for my traders. You can look at the day chart or if you aren't finding a good entry, you can look at the hourly chart to place a long-term investment. So if the market drops tremendously on a one hour chart, you can then get in and then buy it for long term. But I think it's a huge mistake to think that the S&P 500 is gonna fall <laughs> apart. And even when it has fallen 20, 25%, the returns over the next four or five years have been absolutely right. tremendous. Um, even since, since we started the show, like if we look where we were at in 2020, it was at, SPY was at 220, it's now at 523. For an index fund. Yeah, yeah. and the S&P, oh, yeah. Just, just by sector, I'll read off the year to date, right? Communication services, it leads the way. It's up 15%. Technology is up 12%. Energy is up 11%. Financials are up 11%. Even with interest rates where they are, financials are up 11%. Industrials yep. are up 10%. But the sector we talk about, and we spoke about it over the past month, maybe two months, and I know you talk about it all the time, Ian, is, is healthcare. And yeah. that's single digits. That's up 8%. Yeah. But there is, there is a sector, which I think definitely with, Interest rates coming down over the next six to eight months, right? The Fed's saying that they're going to bring rates down. Um, real estate, that sector is off by 3% in the first three months of this year, the first quarter. So if you're looking at conditions, lower interest rates, we talked about a home buying crisis with, with uh, a home building crisis with uh, Don Peebles. They're starting to see some, some indicators that this might be an area that, hey, if we're not looking at it, and especially if we looked at all these other sectors, that there might be some growth ahead, uh, I, I would keep an eye on real estate. Yeah, I agree a thousand percent. Hold for the long term. I don't know how to say it any simpler. Um, if we keep at this pace, the, the, um, we should end around. Give me one second. You about to raise the price target for the S and P? Yeah, I, I got to go on a five fifty three. I mean, and, and listen, an election is coming up. You need every advantage to be able to win. Um, we'll talk about Trump in a little bit and, and his financial thing that he's doing with, with this stock, but you need everything going in your favor. So if the overall economy is slowing down for the regular person, you at least need the stock market to be going up so people can look at their retirement and have like a semblance of safety. Um, so yeah, continue to, continue to hold for the long term. Because in four years, we may be talking about S&P being at 1,000, which is crazy. Like 1,000? You mean 10,000? 10, oh, you're saying it's going at four. I'm talking about SPY. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Yeah, 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 SPY. I got you. I don't want to alarm nobody. <laughs> yeah. Not doing that. <laughs> Let me go look at this put portfolio. No. <laughs> <laughs> to the moon. So the Bentley Bentley CEO says that um, sales are down because the rich are experiencing emotional sensitivity due mm -hmm. to cost of living. Um, how long do you believe this spending freeze will last? Um, I think probably 18 to 20 months. Um, it's really interesting because some people like I think there's two classes like in this market, you're either doing incredibly well. And you're seeing your personal income and personal revenue be the highest it's ever been or people are like suffering tremendously. But Gucci announced that there will be slowing sales. I think LVMH will do the same soon. Bentley CEO stated this. So I think even though that the market has went up a ton, we are going to see like slower spending for 12 to maybe 18 months. And then after that, we'll take back up to the upside. I think once we figure out who's going to be president, what the policies are going to be, if things get smoothed out with China, then people will feel more comfortable. But I think right now people are tightening their belts a little bit, even though the Kellogg CEO 
made that horrendous recommendation. It is reflective of the prices of things being higher than they usually are. So I think for probably an 18 month period, we'll see sales going down a little bit more and people tightening to the essential, uh, to their essentials and be a lot more quiet about their wealth. Like people aren't being as braggadocious like 2020 COVID everybody had Gucci, Louis, everything head to toe looking like a mannequin. I think that slowed down. Um, even in like the sales of Nike, Nike's hit a low that I didn't think they would hit, uh, again from 2022. So 18 months is what I have projected, but what do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, it depends on, on, on where the spending is. You brought us some retail. Um, Nike, we spoke about Lululemon two weeks ago about some of that being but being uh, down more than we thought. But are luxury goods going to be down? Right? Is LVMH stock taking a hit? Right? Like, I don't, when you, I don't think they'll take a hit, but Gucci probably will. And the lower luxury brands, I think, will. Yeah, I, I mean, even during the pandemic, for for the past six months, I mean, you look at LVMH stock; it's up twenty one percent, right, over the past yeah. six months. And so we, we know consumerism is is not going anywhere. I, I just think where the money's so, like in your supermarket, yeah, you can feel that. But as far as the rich feeling emotionally sensitive, I, I don't know. I don't know because people are still spending money at all the time. I, we we saw some of the numbers even in China when they were there being surprised about the amount of spending that is happening, and right. so. Yeah. They're, they're having record sales. We, we started to look at some of the, the credit card companies. If we're looking at Visa, if we're looking at American Express, how have they performed over the past six months? They've so done pretty well. <laughs> right? So when we start looking at these things, I'm like, yeah, well, it, it depends on where is it. If we're talking about automotives, is, are, are we buying luxury cars? Well, I just saw Lamborghini release something and, and it's it's sold out before it even is being produced. And so... It, it it's a it's hit or miss. It's just about the area of, of where it's being spent. Sorry, what so, you think? Well, let me ask another question because it's like what 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 goes up must come down. So yeah, being at the stock market is at an all time high. Are we setting up for a major pullback or correction, either in the summertime or fall? Yeah, I think in the summertime we'll have a pullback. Um, even though things are at a record high right now, um, August, June, and August are usually rough months. And I don't know how much longer we can just have NVIDIA pull the entire market up or the, the promise of AI. Like we pretty much have a cartel between Meta, NVIDIA, AMD, Microsoft, Google, and Apple. I don't know how much longer they can drag the entire market up. And if it wasn't for NVIDIA and AMD pulling the market and SMCI, it probably would be flat. You, you left Same. Amazon out of there. Oh, Amazon. True. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 2.5 invest in Anthropic. Job well done. Job well done. Need it. Um, but I do think we will see a pullback. Lily would be great, of course. I think most of the healthcare companies would be great. But um, the numbers aren't as strong as they should be. We've talked about the geopolitical risk and concerns before, but the numbers just aren't as strong. And CEOs are getting quieter. The only ones that are like out publicly facing are the ones that are just dominating the market. Like Jensen. Jensen looks like a rock star when he had his conference. Mm -hmm. Most CEOs have been a lot more quiet, I think, and then revamping their business models to prepare for what's to come. Um, so I think we'll have a pullback July and August, and then we'll be back to the races towards the end of the year. But that that's not atypical, right? Like we, we've seen that, over, especially, I mean, I like to use these past four years of, of Market Mondays as a microcosm of, of how the market works. Like we've seen this. We talked about the summer, summer slowdown. And yeah, yeah, there was an outlier in 2020. Obviously, there's the pandemic, but we've seen that historically. If you look at the summer months, the volume is down. There's going to be a pullback. We've seen it in the beginning of September. Like we've seen these things. And so they shouldn't be unfamiliar, right? Prepare for it, right? Like, if you were on a sideline, if you weren't participating, well, why weren't you? Was it because you were waiting for this pullback? And now it's all right. I know September is coming. Historically, we've seen that as a month that uh, the S and P has pulled back, Nasdaq has pulled back, mm -hmm. that all the major indices have had a slight pullback over the past four years. This would be the time to enter. So, yeah, I mean, a pullback will come. Um, just how long, the, how much of a percentage that that'll be the key indicator. But yeah, the, the, this AI train is. I think we're, we're still in the beginning of it. I think we're still in the beginning of it. I agree. The only thing that I'm, I won't say worried about, but I think one variable that's different is the lack of quantitative easing. So even with bank, like Bank of Japan or Japan finally coming off of break even, 
interest and they spiked it just a tad bit. Um, I wonder how that's going to affect their market and the Nikkei. And if we don't have easing anytime soon, um, I wonder will the pullback be a little bit sharper and will the companies that are just like floundering around not do as well. So um, we'll talk about Tesla soon, but even like companies like Zillow that had a bunch of promise, they really haven't moved. Spotify hasn't moved that much either. Mm -hmm. um, Disney. I mean, hey, I'm, hoping hey, it, I, hey. I'm hoping it can break hey. above 127 for you. I really I'm do. Just saying, I'm just every week we're starting to see this this number move up. And yeah, yeah. So, but but be on the lookout if the market pulls back 10 to 15 percent. Of course, every week we'll be here. If I see some numbers I like, I'll be sure to call them out. But um, the companies that benefited greatly from a lower interest rate environment or more money being available to consumers. It's a tighter squeeze. Uh, I mean, credit card debt is still at a record high. Mm -hmm. And people are not paying off those balances as quickly as they used to either. So we, we definitely have to factor that in. It's true. So, okay. Let's talk about this then. Uh, what are some common mistakes that traders make in these type of markets? Um, so in a market when we're, when we're in like now, when the market has just been going up and on fire, I think not preparing for when you need to start to short. Cause a lot of times traders will say, well, I'm a bull investor or bull trader, or I'm a bear. And it's like, well, you have to go whatever, whatever the conditions of the markets are. So don't get caught. If the market has a downturn in June or July and think that your strategy for going along when you're trading doesn't work. So number one, you have to be able to flow with the market. Number two, if, the volume drops in the summer, you're going to have to adjust your targets. So if you've been killing on options and getting a hundred percent, you may have to cut that down to 50. If you've been going for like, let's say 40 ticks on ES, you may have to adjust and go to 20 in the summertime. And then in the fall, adjust back to a longer target. And then third, understand when the volume is lighter, there's different players in the market. So like at the open and close, there are different players that are trading, but in the, um, first quarter and fourth quarter, sometimes the mix of traders are not there in the second and third. And uh, lastly, I would say if you are not doing that well at the open to trade the close, that way you can see what happened the first five or six hours of the day. You have a clear direction for where the asset is going. And then at the close, you're going to see the most volume in the last 10 minutes. Look to take your trade in those last 10 and you'll be okay. But if you're not doing well at the open, getting three extra turn profit factor of three or above, I would trade the close um, from now until probably September to get an edge in the market. So trading, trading the close is a, is an interesting strategy. So a lot of people and they get confused. They'll say, well, obviously the market closes at four. At what point do I wait to it's three 30 and it's like, there's a half hour left or is it three, four? So you're saying that I, I'll start looking at three. You, you start. That, so you start looking at three, but do you make the move until that last 10 minutes? Cause Especially if you're if you're trading options and you have to wait for that to even be filled. Sometimes yeah. if you try to put that in at three forty five pause, if you try to have an option filled at three fifty seven, it might not get filled and then you miss out. You gotta wait till nine thirty the next day. So yeah. at, what what's that time frame that you like in futures and, and I guess we I mean it could be transferable for options as well. Yeah, the last fifteen minutes um is what I like. If it doesn't get filled, it doesn't get filled if the move isn't there. You can't force it, but because in, in futures, like you can get whipped out so fast or go negative. Um, you have to wait for the right move, but normally the volume kicks in the last 10 minutes. Now, if you get the trade right, you'll hit your target really fast. If you get in at a bad price, it could be disastrous. So you need to practice. But um, those last 15 minutes is when I'll be looking to fire for sure. Yeah, and I, I, I'm glad you said that. And I want everybody, I'm going to look into the camera, right? It's okay if it doesn't get filled. Like if that Facts. it's okay. It happens. People get really frustrated and they're like, all right, well, I know I put my limit at this number, but it, whether it's nine dollars, right? And the limit now that the ask is nine oh five or it's nine fifty. You don't have to go up to that number. Nope. It's okay. <laughs> don't do it. It's okay. Be disciplined in, in what your plan was, right? So if it doesn't get filled, that's fine. You come back tomorrow. Rather than taking a losing trade, you buy it and, and obviously it depreciates once you get it. So it's yeah. okay if it the option contract does not get filled. Come back another day. So what do you what do you feel about as far as um the landscape? Let's switch topics a little bit. So 
everybody knows about obviously what you know what's been transpiring with Diddy, but I think it's a larger conversation. Um, one of the biggest people that was trolling him with Fifty Cent, and last week he actually got brought up on accusations from uh, his his baby mom. Then we yeah. see John, we see Jonathan Majors, we see uh, Vince McMahon. Um, this is like a a common theme over the last sixteen months. Yeah, of powerful men um, that have um, had issues with women, a variety of different issues from assault to accusations to um, all kinds of different things. Right. And it's um, some have actually ruined businesses and some are still in the allegation phase. But what are you what's your thoughts and takeaways from this current uh, landscape? That when we've seen Eric Adams, the mayor of New York, he got accused of something. Um, There's just like a variety of, of different people that have yeah. been, you know, in the over the tower. I think um, for too long, men who that have had power have used it to get sexual favors out of people. And I don't think men are taught properly how to approach a woman or be able to read the room when it's time to back away. Um, is some of it witch honey? I'm sure in some of the cases, yes, but I think there's too much force going on and whatever I keep saying, whatever you do is going to come out publicly. So you have to remember like off the record, everything's always on the record. Some people cho chose to go to NDA route. Some people choose to record in the house. I think it's a good idea if you get permission to do so, but I think for too long, people use their money, power, wealth um to throw themselves upon people who didn't want it and also too back to the integrity thing vince mcmahon you should have paid the girl settled with you you paid her nine hundred thousand of the three what did you think was gonna happen like she agreed to the three you agreed to the three okay great after y'all agreed to the three <laughs> pay he was paying everybody else anyway and also too going back to vince mcmahon if that many people died in the NBA, David Stern would have went to jail. At one point, almost a wrestler per year was dying from drug overdose that he knew about, but all of a sudden it was off the books. You can't have all these heinous actions in your business and think that nothing is going to come back on you. Like It's better to just do business the right way, be above board, be integral, keep your word, be honorable. Um, and I don't wish to downfall of anybody, but, and also too, it's another lesson and be careful and who you cross that boy went and married your daughter and you tried to cut his legs from underneath him. And then your legs got undercut while teaming up with BlackRock. Like the stuff that happens in corporate will make narcos look like a kindergarten show. Operate with integrity. yo. I think it's a few lessons for, um, this is a business lesson because I feel like this is something for, I'm going to talk from both perspectives for men. I don't think a lot of men are actually taught how to properly interact with women. Sexual harassment oh. is a real thing. And, um, not even talking about these cases, but just in general. And yeah. I've seen, I've seen situations firsthand where men we don't like, you're chill. Yeah. You're, you're doing too much. Men don't fully understand boundaries. A lot of times. Right. And it's, mm -hmm. it starts with even boys and, and, and little kids um, where men are taught to be super aggressive. Right. And that's like um, the way that you should court women. Right. And it, it can get a little confusing because sometimes that that can actually turn somebody on. That could turn a woman on. But in this environment and just in life in general. I think that's that's not a good way to go about it, right? For me personally, I'm always super like you got to come on me. Like now I'm saying, yes. like, I'm never I'm never gonna go out of my way to to do something because at the end of the day, you don't know how a person is feeling, and sometimes it's not communicated, but it can it can come out later on. And they started making these sexual harassment laws in business and HR because it's a real thing. This is yeah. this is a this is billions of dollars that have been in uh, lawsuits and people fired 
the workplace, sexual harassment and sexual assault in the, in the workplace is a is a real thing. It's a right? real thing. And this is why they have like training and all of that. And then, like a lot of times people look at it like, oh, this is corny. This is stupid. But it's really not because it's like if you don't if you don't properly if you don't properly know how to interact with a woman, then you could catch a charge for something that you you don't even think that is anything wrong with. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's that's the first part is like you have to teach your sons right and wrong when it comes to dealing with women and women's boundaries. Then also women have to teach their daughters um, certain things as well, right? As far as like, this is something that when a lot of times you put yourself in in environments where you want to be what you want to be with a rapper or you want to be with a CEO or you want to be with, and it's like, there's a lot of negatives that come with that, yeah. right? And this is the harsh reality of stuff that we have to talk about as well, right? Where it's like, this is a lifestyle that is not um, holy, right? It's not holy at all. And there's benefits that come with that, monetary benefits that come with that. But now we're starting to see the dark side of that. Yeah. And I think that that's something that this is because my thing is like, how do we learn from this? Everybody wants us to talk about Diddy and make memes, and but it's like, whether we talk about him or not, it doesn't matter, right? But how do we learn from this situation? For young women, it's extremely important to understand that what's being portrayed on social media is to get a baller, to get somebody with diamonds, to get a private jet. Okay, that's cool. But now we're starting to see the, the other side of that story. And the abuse that comes with it, yeah. You get, you get on a private jet. Now, what's happening on the jet? You can't get off that. Right? Or you can't get off the jet. Right. So now it's like now a full story has to be told. So now you can you can make an informed decision about, OK, the glitz and glamour, everything that glitters is in gold. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, like I said, it's a business lesson because these things are happening in, in, in business and they're causing real issues in business. Right. But bigger yeah. than that, it's just, it's just a life lesson yeah. that I think that, um, you know, a lot of people are looking past it. They're making mockery of the situation. They're having fun. They're making memes and, um, they're not learning from the situation. Mm-hmm. Right. They want to chastise somebody. Your chastisement doesn't mean anything. If somebody's going to face time in jail and they're going to, you don't, you don't have enough power to put somebody in jail. So look at the situation objectively. You don't know these people but you can still learn from these people. Right. Yeah. And that's, how I always look at it, Like, what can I learn? What can I learn from this situation? And that's one thing. And I tell my friends all the time, like, be careful how you deal with women. Like it's not okay to make somebody do something that they don't want to do. It's not yeah. okay to forcibly put somebody in a situation that's uncomfortable for them. It's not okay to touch somebody if they don't want to be touched. These are things that Facts. happen very often and it happens so often that we start to normalize it. Even growing up, we see a lot of things that's dysfunctional. And after a while, you don't even you don't even think it's dysfunctional because it's happened so much that it just becomes normal. But it's like it's really not. And this is something that we really have to start having some real conversations about as far as, yeah. you know, the proper etiquette and the proper manner, how you carry yourself for men, but for women also. Yeah, I think it's vitally important. I'll keep it brief. Um, I think you, you kind of alluded to the end. With great power comes more opportunities. With with that comes more responsibility. Um, mm-hmm. And with, with that, you have to move with integrity. Um, but I'll just add to what Shadi said. And one of the, the strongest things, and I think, because we, we make light of a lot of things, and some things really, this is not for comic relief. This is somebody's life, right? And there's victims to yeah. this. Um, so there's no comic relief in it, but one of the most important things, and you alluded to it, but you didn't say it, is having a strong team around you. Um, because that's important. A lot of times yeah. when people are in positions of power, there is nobody to have a checks and balance with. And so it's kind of whatever I say goes, and I don't want to upset the person who's the head of the, the food chain. Um, yeah. and with that, you're going to have abuse of power. Um, so it's important to have a strong team. It's important to have somebody, like you said, when something is moving out of line, like, no, nah, we need to check that now. Um, because number one, it's not indicative of who you are, right? So that's why the integrity part is important. Yeah. But it's an, and not indicative of who we are, right? Especially if you're representing a company or you're representing yourself and your family, you need to make that very clear. Because uh, the last thing you want to be 
part of is something that is heinous and now you had no part in it but the fact that you were there you are um so having a strong team is important not having just yes men or yes women is important and i think it's vice versa too you, you talked about the men and when it comes to harassment but women as well that's happened uh, not as often as men but it does happen so i think everybody yeah. uh can learn f from this and make sure that you know when you're moving uh that you're very aware and and you don't lose yourself in, inside this space because that can happen right with, with success you start to lose some of the morals you start to lose some of the integrity you start to lose some of the character that you grew you grew up knowing um which is easy and that's why it's important to have strong people around you to make sure that it's not an auto correct but it's something that needs to be corrected in that moment is the entertainment industry a playground for this though like even the nickelodeon documentary that was that's part of that that like yeah it's insane that girl who played our Carly was crying. Amanda Bynes was crying out for years and everyone called her crazy right. in her face. Yeah. And never said nothing like that. Was, that's a tough documentary to watch. Yeah. Especially if you got kids. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah. 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 For sure. So, yeah, don't, you know, be mindful. Um, but yeah, I, I don't abuse of any time, abuse of any kind is is uh something that you know is just a corny way to go about life if you're abusing kids i feel like if you're if you're an abuser then that's something that says a lot about you you yeah. you have an inferiority complex because you have to pick on people that that are not um able to match yeah. up to you physically or mentally so you know you pick on a kid you abuse a kid that's a vulnerable person that you have more power over right if you abuse a woman that's a vulnerable person nine times out of ten that you have more power over or vice versa. Some some women can abuse men. That happens, but mm -hmm. most of the time, it's a, yeah. it's, a, it's a man abusing a woman. Mm -hmm. So it's like you know, I, I don't I don't agree with that. I don't agree with like you know, physically just beating somebody or you know cursing somebody out. You know, arguments may happen, but that's another thing. Emotional intelligence. We have to teach kids how to deal with emotions. How to you know, because it could be heated exchange, but you know, you don't you don't nothing good comes from that. And once you yeah. start to do that on an ongoing basis, it becomes a habit, and then it becomes part of your daily routine. And before you know it, you just be that that just becomes part of what you what you do. You um, so yeah, you know, I think it's just be mindful. Like I said, puff, it don't got nothing to do with puff, really. It's just this is just the highlight of the whole thing. So I know people, you know, want me to throw puff under the bus, but that's not a. It's not going to happen because I don't even know what happened, and b. Um, that's not helpful even if i did do that right like me um throwing puff under the buff doesn't help the situation it doesn't help the victims and it doesn't it doesn't get justice for anybody it's just me speaking ignorantly because i don't know what happened i don't have any information on it so um yeah. i think you guys would be better suited if you worry about yourselves and worry about your families and um raise your children in a manner that would be conducive to this not happening again for the next generation because there will be another puff there'll be another you know whoever vince mcmahon there'll be another x this one i'm roaming around right now they won't put charges on yeah so instead of you worrying about a celebrity worry about your family and worry about your community and if we all did that then this world would be a much better place and our culture would be in a in a much better space uh yeah. fellas no means no if you shoot a shot in the dm if she don't reply by the second one let it go if she yeah. interested, she messages you all day, all night, bro. But if you're talking to yourself in the DMs for five months, take that's, a clue. That's chapter. That's chapter one. Well, <laughs> mental illness is real too, and a lot of men are, are for real. And uh, you know, somebody got killed um, off of that. They, the woman uh, rejected his advances, and, he, and I think it was in Brooklyn. He stabbed her in a bodega, and it's like you know, this is this mm -hmm. is real. Like you know, what I'm saying, like if you got daughters, you got to teach your daughters to, to protect yeah. themselves. You know, this is real. They gotta, you know, know the different type of environments that they can go to, hours, how you dress, a variety of different things. I'm not justifying anything, but you also have to be intelligent. Yeah. You don't want to put yourself in bad situations, right? So this is real. There's a lot of there's a lot of men that are mentally deranged out here and they do crazy things yep. for no reason. So yeah. Be mindful, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. That's a, that's that's crazy. Crazy. Women even gotta give their number out and then act like they're interested to then get out the spot and block you mm -hmm. like what yeah yeah a lot of them start like wait you gave me a number for what like no i don't want him to go crazy so i gave it to him and that happened. like i was interested for it what yeah i got him and, and some of y'all just need to start getting beat up too 
Old school. Facts. Y'all want to be predators. Okay. Yeah. Stop it. All right. Well, back to trading. Um, okay. So what adjustments would you make at trading the open ES NASDAQ or the bond market? Um, one of them I talked about going from trading the close instead of the open. I think that would give you an edge. Number two, if you aren't able to get your footing and let's say you're not trading at a successful enough rate, you would not win a seven out of 10 trades. I would trade the London session, um, less volatility, less volume, but you're not going to get stopped out as fast. And then I talked about it before, but you got to pick a target for NASDAQ, ES and the bond market, UB and ZB that you can easily hit to get a win under your belt. So for ES, four ticks is amazing. The bonds, four ticks is amazing. NASDAQ, I think probably 40 ticks is a short target that I think everyone can hit. So uh, this is a layup. This confidence booster, you get a win. Sometimes you just need to hear target field. But I think sometimes we'll go for so big of a target because we need a big number to pay off a debt or we want to brag on social media. But sometimes chipping away at the tree with small, consistent gains is going to give you the wins that you want. Um and then I would look at every homework assignment, go and trade and view, look at every major indicator that people use. So like the 20, the 100, the 50, the 72, the 400 EMA, and look at the areas where other traders are using them so you can know where they want to exit. So you will know prematurely what, where to get out. So if you know traders like to use in a down market, a 10 EMA that crosses through a 20, it may not be your setup, but you need to know where other traders are exiting and entering. So I think if you put those five in combination, I think you'll have a lot more wins and you'll be able to see the flow of the market a lot better and, and win a lot more frequently. All right. All we do is win. So um, Donald Trump, hit the like button. Yes. Yeah. Donald Trump. Uh, uh, yeah, I had a little week, man. The 495 we talked about got cut down to 170. <laughs> The next right. day, the, 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 his uh, True Social ticker uh, went public. I think they, they had a SPAC merger. Uh, he owns, what, 80 million shares? Yep. 80, some crazy 80 million shares. Um, based on where it opened at, his 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 worth is $6.2 billion. Right? So I know like, he's waiting for that 90-day lockup period to expire so fast. Well, they, got, they got him on a longer than 90 days, so he got the six-month lockup. So he, he can't trade or loan uh, or um, try to have a loan against the shares. So you got to wait six months. So that brings him to October. About, yeah, October, right before wow. the election, which is, I mean, but that's the thing. Or like, if Biden finds a way to let him exit early, Trump may not even want to run. <laughs> six billion. Let me up. get about like three and a half billion. Biden, you can have the office. I'll go right back to mar lago Cool. He got to run now. If he wins, his, that, that actually is going to be worth something. Like the mean, it's all right. So his thing is a mean stock now, right? It's officially mm -hmm. a mean stock. By, by definition, it's a mean stock in, in the sense that it's not trading off of any technicals or fundamentals. Yeah. It's just moving on sediment. So what people think or how people feel about pretty much him, right? Because if you think about it's a it's a social media app. I don't, I'm not on it. I don't know if any of you guys are on it, but where how do you generate revenue on social media apps majority of times it's advertising and if it we haven't seen any i, I haven't been on to see if there's any advertising. I, I don't know who's spending the money but to have a valuation this high for something mm -hmm. that what it was created two years ago maybe not even i found it around yep and what also makes it is that and this is important about memes and i think you you always talk about it being <laughs> Ponzi schemes, right? They're all, they're not bad until people start wanting their money and the value goes down. On the yeah. way up, people are going to make money, and so this is kind of like the definition of that meme. Yeah, it's trading at one price now, but that doesn't mean it can't go higher, and it, maybe true. it will. And if the population that is in no in 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 enamored like, norm, enamored with his presence, yeah, his lead starts to start pulling up a little bit higher in this presidential election. His popularity starts to decrease even more. More news breaks out. You can start to see that ticker start to move up, move up. Now, based on fundamentals and technicals, should it? Probably not. Probably but not. What qualifies it as a meme? The interesting thing is, could he run his campaign donations through the social media site? 
like donate here as a way to drive revenue? Because if so, I don't want to give him an idea, but hmm. if his base contributes to that and now you can solidify the revenue and he gets hot at the right time and could win, and maybe if he does a debate through that platform, I mean, he Trump, could work the magic. Trump, Trump's a hustler. He yep. can find a way to, 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 you know, figure, figure some things out and make some money. And he has celebrity. This is why it always says, like people always say like, you know, I'd rather be rich than famous. That's not always entirely the best way to go about it. Because if, if you're rich and you have no fame, if you lose your money, all you have is your relationships mm -hmm. and your information, hopefully you get it back. But if you're famous and you're rich and you lose your money, you still have your fame. Like an open door. <laughs> and depending on how famous you are, that fame is going to carry you through. Mike Tyson, he's always he about to make $50 million for fighting. He's 50 years old, 55 57. years old. Yep. Crazy. That's because he's famous. Yes. Not because he's a skilled, he could be a, a skilled fighter and nobody knows who he is. He's not making $57 million. So mm -hmm. in some cases, Fame actually is more valuable right. than money. Yeah. And Donald Trump is a perfect example of that. No matter what, he, he falls down, he gets knocked out, he gets sued for 400 million. He, he look, it, you think it's over and his name is big enough and he has enough of a following to make himself. He literally just made himself a billionaire over again. They got as much followers as fan base. Shout out to Isaac Hayes. Yeah, they went over 600,000. Shout out to, shout out to Isaac. So if, if, if they have, how many followers does Truth have? <laughs> Any event that they have that why isn't Isaac Hayes a billionaire? Because Donald Trump's name is Donald Trump, right? Yeah. So he literally just made himself six billion dollars out of thin air. Out of thin air, a, yeah. A social media platform. That I don't have I've never met one person in life that was ever champion Truth Social. I don't know anybody that's on Truth Social. I've never seen anything get reposted from Truth Social. I've never seen anything. Um, I've never seen anything on Truth Social other than articles and news about Truth Social because Donald Trump was attached to it. Mm, no, they. So there's an argument saying that the legit followers are in that 500 to six, but they're saying that there's five million. There's five million. That's a big difference, but they don't know how many of them are legit. So we'll, <laughs> we don't know. All right. Well, even five million. That's still not a lot in relative. Yeah, relative. Yeah. To, to him having a six billion dollar valuation for crazy. five million people, they got. I mean, TikTok has two billion. Look at all right. Look at it from this standpoint. He has five million people on his platform, yeah. right? Logan Paul probably has a hundred million followers. Mm -hmm. Kai Sinet, probably he. How many followers does Kai Sinet have just on Instagram alone? Just on, yeah. Right. Yep. Kim Kardashian has one hundred million followers. Yeah. So, so yeah, he has nine million. Kai has nine. Nine point. I got nine million followers just on Instagram, let alone YouTube and Twitch and Twitter. And he probably got he got he probably has an aggregate of over fifty million followers. Yeah. So I think I have to say that's a business lesson in, in branding yeah. and keeping yourself relevant. If all else fails, keep your name popping. Yeah, Cristiano Ronaldo. He's a he has six hundred and twenty six million. He's a, a what? Well, I mean, that, that's deserved. The no. most followed person on Instagram. Keep your name popping. Mm -hmm. And anything can happen. It can open yeah, what, is the segment? What, what are like three? Let's say five ways to keep your brand relevant and top of mind. Oh man, actually, you got it. You got it. So this this is a tricky thing, right? Because it's like you're gonna have to do things that you probably morally like. You got to do outlandish things to stay relevant over the course of time. <laughs> Fifty Cent's a great example of this. <laughs> oh, that's so he's I remember at some point in time, Fifty Cent was they counted him out musically. Yeah, it was over. Over. <laughs> then he came back with power and he reinvented himself. But in between that, he's never been afraid to do a variety of different things publicly that probably most people wouldn't feel comfortable doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you read the art of war or 48 laws of power, <laughs> that, that's part of it. You got to, you got to do things that <laughs> keep your name relevant. I, I was yeah. going to reference what uh, I, I, Alaska on blackout said about 48 hours. Game dash. Yeah. But we could, we could shout out to another thing that you have to yeah. do. Another well, thing. I, can, I, can I touch on do the, the outlandish thing? Cause it, it honestly, it's how we could have stayed with Trump, right? When you think about, think about what he's done. We talked about the sneakers last month. You see what he released this month? 
The selling Bible. Bibles. He's selling Bibles for sixty. He don't even read the Bible for sixty. But, yeah. <laughs> so what ha inside the Bible it has like it has copies of the nation's founding documents, but it also has lyrics to God bless America, God bless the USA inside of it. And he's selling mm -hmm. for sixty dollars. So it's just a series of just like <laughs> Nah, he, he's not going to do that. But he then, can't but, do that. But then it's also then he does it. I mean, even for us, right? That's something that we've had to we've had to keep our name relevant. So it's like, okay, we do a world tour. Nobody's ever yeah. thinking about doing a world tour, right? That's news. That's that's way to stay relevant within the culture. Um, we do invest fest, right? That's a way to stay relevant within the culture. We create a financial curriculum for yeah. high schools and pilot it in the Bronx. That's newsworthy. That's a way to stay relevant. We have Donald Trump come to this year's Invest Fest. <laughs> Breaking news alert! <laughs> oh, hold on, my, my, if my if I, I hear steps coming down. People, somebody's coming down the steps. If y'all think, <laughs> oh, think DT is going, it would be a, a good keynote for the, for Invest yeah, Fest this year. Put in chat. Let me just let me just check the temperature real quick. But if y'all think that that uh, DT, you know, I got I gotta go upstairs right now. If y'all think if y'all think DT would be good for this year, you think DT would be a good guest for Invest Fest? I'm going with whatever Troy mom and dad say. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm I, don't care, I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> and then when I come in, yeah, why did you agree? I'm so sorry. You, you know, know, like, you got to go, like, to the crib, right? Like, DT? <laughs> I'm going to get a call after this. What about, I, 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 I'm going to get a call. What about Joey? Joey Crack. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> DT actually, he actually tried to tweet Adam and put Joe Button. I'm going to say he tried to tweet Adam. Yeah, he tried Adam who? at Joe Biden. Oh, Joe Biden. And he put a U instead. <laughs> put Joe That's Button. Cool. Shout out to Joey <laughs> Button. He might be. But it, it would be controversial. It would be. It would be legend. I tell you what. If we have Donald Trump at InvestFest, which might happen, by the way, um, perhaps. That'd this, be like I know, this is how it's going to happen. Everybody will, will say. Well, not everybody. A lot of people will say that um, we sold out. Yes. That um, the the price. we're a part of Illuminati. Mm -hmm. That um, they hate us. They turn. We turn our backs on the culture. And guess what will happen when he gets on stage? Everybody gonna rush the stage. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen it. I've seen this happen before. That's why I, this around you. I don't trust. The, I don't trust the public, bro. I don't trust the public, bro. I've seen this happen before. Well, if people want to see if like, he gets on stage. They want to see 20, that. Twenty thousand people standing in up. attendance, standing, watching. It's not real. Like it's not it's real, crazy. bro. It's it's it, crazy. It invoke with emotion. Being, I mean, it invokes emotion. But another thing that you could do to stay relevant is to um. This is the Drake. This is the Drake model. Skew young and work with um the next wave of, of talent. Yeah, and collaborate. Yeah, and co-op and co-op that Drake has done a yeah. tremendous job of co-opting that. Right. So when he works with little baby, when little baby's on a come up, right, or he goes to London and, and, and gets with Central C, or he goes to Jamaica and gets with Popcorn, or he or he rides the, the, kid, the kid for bats right now. He riding Drake. No, 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 no. Salute no, to Drizzy. No, don't do this that. This is a business no, lesson, don't guys. Don't say that. Don't this is a that. business lesson, guys. <laughs> Salute to Drizzy. But he's found a great way of reinventing himself by finding up and coming yeah. wave makers. It's the audio. They're not right waves yet. Right we went over this. They it's not waves. a wave yet. They they, they've waves. created a buzz. He makes it a wave. There's a difference. Like, he's not. He, rather than being relevant, he's staying responsive. There's a difference. So in business, if you look into look look for the new hot up and coming content mm -hmm. creators, the new hot designers, the new Kanye did the same thing. Jay did absolutely, it. they all did it. They all did it. Just Drake, yeah, absolutely. Done it. Drake's done it on a different level. Yeah, yeah. he's done it the best. He perhaps maybe he has well, a better ear for it. He's he, a, he's a, he's the best A and R. He's he's responsive. He's the best A and R in music business. What's the next sound? He's looking. He's seeking it. He's yeah. listening on YouTube. He's tapped in. Yeah, he's he's everywhere with it. So listening it's like that. even for us, like I watch I watch Instagram. I watch content creators. I watch people that's doing their thing. I watch you know, you know what y'all doing. You got to stay up to date. You can never get caught in a bubble, and Just only. Still. Know your own you bubble going on your own bubble is that what I'm saying? yeah bubble? that's what i'm saying your never, own bubble never get caught in the yeah, bubble. You gotta know what's going on that's the truman show you never know what's happening out there yeah so those yeah. are those are two ways that you can stay in the in the media cycle i love it <laughs> big t at invest fest dt day one or two uh i said day two five <laughs> <laughs>
day one, it'll Finale. mess up the event. It might not be a day. <laughs> Can you Big imagine? Fact. Dude, you it out there. They're gonna be outside. You gonna have oh gonna man have the or, whole the whole movement is gonna be. They're gonna have a whole yeah. Like get out the way, man. We trying to get to the they food gonna, trucks, man. Shut down the highway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tesla, Tesla, Oof. falling apart. Mm -hmm. Tesla's falling it's apart. Had a, it's had a terrible first quarter, down nearly thirty percent in the first quarter. Yep. Um. Okay. So this has been very bad. Elon Musk is admitting that he's on drugs and all kinds of crazy stuff. Cyber truck drop. Yeah, it did. It's hard, on the, fire. It's hard on the streets. Yeah. Um, okay. So what do we what do we expect from the situation going forward? Uh I expect, and Ian and I were talking about it, there's going to be uh more of a downturn. Uh in the short for for the, a short period of time. And yeah. the reason is obviously the first quarter has not gone as planned. But also, they're going to report their numbers for the first quarter on deliveries. And we know how much Tesla is relying on the amount of cars that they're delivering. And that number, from all estimates, is going to be far short than the 400,000 they did year to date last year. Yeah. Um, so I, I see a little bit more dip in the company. Now, there was one positive uh, the China sales, which is a market that they're trying to you know, make sure that they can be relevant in. I know BYD, we talked about them. BYD is on their ass, Paul. They, yeah. they're, they're right there on them. But the, the sales in, in China were up 41% year to date, which is good. I just don't know if it's going to offset the, the U.S. numbers. And so there might be more of a downturn. But, but this is an opportune time. If you were not in Tesla and if you're a firm believer of Tesla, to make sure that you pick your target price for where you want to enter this because this will not be a long term thing in my prediction. I don't, this is not long term. This is the time where it's all right, let me start figuring out where my price points are. And if you're already in the positions, all right, well, maybe I re enter at another position uh, yeah. rather, you know, I, I average down on it. So I'm still long term on Tesla. I still believe in the company. Uh, but short term, there's, there's, gonna, there's a little bit more pain to come. Yeah, I like it. If it gets down to 137.57 or 155.65, those are two price points I would definitely buy. Um, if they have another down quarter, I'm going to go on a full campaign for Elon to step down. Boy, you got to get off the dust. <laughs> Kiss what it like. We got to call a spade a spade. Like that dust juice. <laughs> And for those of you in the comments, the, whether it's the clip or show now, yes, Elon's richer than me, better entrepreneur, yada yada. My analysis isn't wrong though. Like it's Correct. hard to run uh, a, a multi-billion-dollar company when you have Bobby Brown jaw. So either things get better, and once again, he needs a hedge fund to then support it publicly, like Kathy did, in order for it to raise back up. BYD is a formidable component, mm -hmm. especially in China. They're going to buy from their own as they should. Um, I'm still long the stock long term, um, but we need different leadership right now for yeah, sure. The, the price cuts, you would think that would add to the amount of sales on the, the car. It hasn't quite worked out just yet. Uh, and I, when yeah, I was it was sure. a luxury company and people are like, no, no, it's not. Any car above 60 is a luxury car. You can't then sell the work for 40000 or if I bought it at 65 and now it's worth 32 If this happened in homes, we would have a housing crisis. Like the value of the cars from two years ago are down 55%. You think people are going to recommend that to their friends and family? No. No, so, but if it gets to those two levels, I'm I'm definitely a buyer. But I think uh, if we have another quarter like this, we need another CEO to take over. I'm not sure who will be in that succession planning, um, but they definitely need to make some changes. I think he is overworked, overstressed, um, and going back to the numbers, profit margin fifteen percent, which is great. There, operate margin is nine percent, not the best. Percentage of float is only three percent. Um, but the inside of ownership is only 16.43%, which is telling. So, yeah, do I say believe in the long term? Yes. You, short term pain? Yes. But I think he needs to be a better CEO or find someone who can lead that company. It's been a, 
But since 2021, when it peaked, obviously it split twice. Um, and that was even in, in a short period of time, like then 18 months, it has split twice. Yeah. Uh, since 2021, man, if you look at the five year chart, not, not the best looking chart. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight bad quarters. I was going to say, how many negative quarters in a row? <laughs> Come on. Deliver the cyber truck to think his fire, delivered it too late. It was like the chronic for Dr. Dre. Glad it came out, but you didn't put it out what it could have been on fire. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to see them rebound, but they have to fix this pricing issue. Wait, what, what, what's chronic you speaking of? Not chronic. What, what was the one that took 52 years to come out? Oh, the the, the drone. Detox. detox. My bad. My bad. Detox. Yeah. That, that yeah. 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 They ain't really hit like that. Time and, and truth be told, that Tesla isn't as sexy with him having some of those issues. Going back to the integrity, like people love to buy from people they know, like, trust, and respect. Even though I agree, Don Lemon was a little bit flippant, but the racism hopped out a little bit too much on Don, too. Given you and your father's past, I understand it why he fired Don. Because I don't think that's the right way to approach an interview. I think he should have softball questions first, then went in for the harder questions. But, you know, some of the racism in, in him popped out as well. I hope he rebounds. Tuss is one of my favorite companies, but leadership has not been great. You know, another another thing, my last thing as far as business lesson, how to keep your name relevant forever. Put your name on things that um, are public facing. That's another thing. Donald Trump's actually he's actually an intelligent person, and um, he, he putting his name on all of these buildings and attaching Trump to everything. It it, it kept his name relevant for for years, even though a lot of these buildings are taking the name off. But that kept his name in public eye. And this is something that I learned. You know, when you look at donors, right, to colleges, and um, the, they don't they donate like a hundred million dollars, fifty million dollars. Yeah. There's usually one thing that's attached to that. Name uh, I know it. Yep. Yeah, name name a wing after me. So man. it'd be like the Carnegie wing of NYU or mm -hmm. the, all of these museums named after people, all of these uh, like you go to the business school of Langone or whatever. Like these are people's names. It's a re yeah. this is done intentionally. If they if they didn't want recognition, they wouldn't have put the name on it, right? Yep. This this is part of a marketing strategy. Like they could have just gave the fifty million dollars and just called it a day. But you see all of these names, even with um presidents, all of these high schools, Kennedy. We talk about Kennedy, uh, Roosevelt. Yep. Um, you know, all of these different things. Not even got Barack Obama school, but that's a way for your name to stay relevant and to live for long periods of time. Yeah. Put your name on a school. Put your name on a library. Put your name on a building. Name a street after you. Name a street after yourself. Do something where the public is going has no choice but to see your name over and over again. Like I said, this is how America was actually built. Everything is named after somebody, and that's not done um, by accident. That is done intentionally. Yeah. And that's probably, that's probably one of the first branding mm -hmm. plays ever in American history is to name. Everything after, after somebody, Lincoln after Tunnel, somebody. George Washington Bridge. I mean, they yeah. did it with slaves. That's the biggest branding. That's, yeah, that's the origin of it. Yeah. They, literally, they literally named. Take your name. They they gave their names to every slave that was on their plantation. So now Williams, Harris, whatever the slave's master name was, your mm -hmm. whole generation is that. So now my name is going to live forever because now I I only have two children, but I got three hundred slaves. So every one of these slaves carries a name that is very unique. And, and obviously that's not their native name, especially back then. That wasn't a native black person's yeah. name to have a name like, you know, Stoudemire. But now every time you hear Stoudemire, that is a name of somebody that actually branded that on an actual human being. Yeah. Williamson, like Williamson. Yeah. 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 No disrespect to anybody with that last name. But yes, of course, yeah. and we are not endorsing the slavery brand. No, 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 just so. But, I mean, it's part of it's part of the it's part of it's part of America was built on business fundamentals, and the slaves were actually the commodity. So yeah. it's like they they used that as far as stock market exchange trading, shipping, 
insurance, insurance, um, all of these things. These are all business principles that we that we have built the country on that we use that to this day. Right. And, And that was something that was built. So it's like when studying that it's all intertwined history, business marketing yeah. branding it's all intertwined and if you if you study that enough then you'll know okay now i i get it i get it now i know i know why this is done i know why, why they put their name on everything like this is why mm-hmm. it's done for a reason right like their name is going to live forever yeah um also being correct in predictions one that i've leaned on a lot um even the the black kid black jacket pineapple juice controversial personality if you compare the predict like if miss cleo would have predicted a bunch of stuff right oh empire she just predicted too much wrong back in the day but if you make some predictions and they come true tied to events or you help others another one delivering on what you promise you're going to do that's a big one in business like even at amazon the thing that amazon did better than kmart sears target they got the product to you faster than they originally promised you going back to sam and ftx if you would have just got people thirty percent a quarter, gold mine in the Bahamas. But you want to tell people you're getting seven thousand percent? Like, come on, bro. Yeah. yeah. Another another thing with branding. Going back to Big T, um, you know what he put? Big T now you can't just be DT. Depends on who you talk to. But a lot of people, that's nah, what they call him. Big T. They call him. Nobody's calling call him Big T. Bro. Nah, few people. That's, call that's him. A few people have though. Yeah, nah, that's pause. That's, that's pause. How the pause? Big T. That's crazy. He's another Big man. T. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. No, did he? No, yo, yo, come <laughs> on. We're not doing that. <laughs> I'm a Tupac fan. I'm doing it. No, prayers kidding. to you and the family, but I'm doing y'all it. Y'all see, yeah, we not. This is not a laughing matter. We're not doing that. Got gotcha. you. I'm not laughing. Who even made that up? Who made that? Quilly. Yeah. Who? Quilly, the uh, Meek Mill old friend. Oh, uh, what's up with Meek Mill? Meek Mill's friends. Oh, they all doing these interviews with DJ Vlad now. Like, I mean, with uh, academics. Like, academics. I've learned sometimes when you stop giving out cash apps and wires frequently. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to those who I used to give them to and then they ain't turn on me. But for those of you who did, oh, okay. That's Shout the thing. Yo, I'm going to go do a review video on you. At this point, I don't even care. Go ahead. Shout out to me. Yes. The Dictator. One, so attitude, did, yeah. with, the, with the stimulus check, that's, a, that's another example. He put yeah. his name on it. It didn't come from him personally. It came from the United States Treasury, right? The government. But yeah. when you got your stimulus check, you saw Donald Trump on it. Yeah. And to this day, people think that Trump is good for the economy. And then you ask him, well, why do you say that Trump was good for the economy? And after a few minutes, I guarantee you, it he everybody got checks. Yeah. They remember that. Four, it, yeah. four years what, later, what was the data? A lot of people. A lot of people. A lot of people. Four what, years what, later. Yeah. Four years later, they <laughs> that's still engraved in their brain that Trump was good for the economy. Like I said, some people have good arguments. Very few have good arguments, but the vast majority of people that say he's good for the economy, they go like, yeah, he kept he kept the money flowing. He, he we all got checks. Well, which careful. was the, uh, originally done by Rockefeller and the careful depression. But I'll be careful who you have a conversations with. I'm having conversations with the people on the ground. I'm, just, I'm not saying comments, they, I'm saying be people. careful. Of course, we, a billion. I'm not the billionaires are not going to say this. No, that's not who's who, that's not the electorate. Look, Donald Trump was a Democrat before. He's he's a very intelligent person. He's playing a game to ignorant white people in red states, and he's rallied his support and he got elected off of that. And and it's there's other people. So the vast majority of people that are in the electorate are being manipulated by Democrats and Republicans, right? Yep. And their views are swayed because they haven't done a tremendous amount of research mm-hmm. and they're vulnerable financially. And they they that's why they use like these little slogans and they use different lines and it'll be like one thing, it'll be like, Oh, we're gonna go after your guns. They're gonna go, they're gonna take your guns away. Yeah. Don't trust them or the affirmative action. They're going to give all black people money or like, you know, they use abortion as a hot. T- like they just use these things like these are done intentionally because they know that if you keep it simple, you can win votes. If you get complicated, you're going to That's lose. You, yeah, you're going to lose. Yep. And, and the person who brings home the most money 
for their constituents usually win. Like the, the president is a financial parent. So if you do, if you drop the ball on that bag, got to be out of there. Like you said, Bush lost. I mean, the recession happened. Shellacked by Barack. Like you, you have to you have to be a good steward of that money and timing as well. So that's a fact. Yeah. But it's just the reality that we're in. That's why they, they wear these overalls and they go in and they, they do all these photo ops and they, you know, drink milkshakes and have like the all American hamburger. It's not, they think they really want to eat hamburgers. They're playing to the masses. Yeah. This is all optics and it's all marketing. It's yeah. not real, but people buy it and they eat it up and it works. It works. Yeah. Pandering. They just pander. Be careful. Not to get confused, not to get confused with Red Panda, at all. Please, because we, we, we can get the money out and make it for him. <laughs> <laughs> what are we talking about? <laughs> the next president who run, I don't know why Market Mondays isn't a part of your election campaign to help the Americans' money. We got some ideas. <laughs> By we got the way, few, we got we got a few ideas. By the way, okay, a few last, ideas. Last question: fifteen billion worth of options on Bitcoin and Ethereum expire on Friday. How should they play for the second quarter? Try one of the swings to you um, because it's an option. How do, for, for Q2, like how should they play it with the expiration? New money would be flowing in. How would you be trading the Bitcoin and Ethereum yeah. options? The, 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 the cryptocurrency space is so volatile. Um, and obviously, we, we have the countdown ticket to having, right? And so that's such a big event. Mm -hmm. I'm yep. not sure that this this run hasn't been baked in already. Um, I, it's tough. It's a, it's a tough proposition. If I, if it's me, I'm not sure if I'm entering new positions inside of, of cryptocurrency just yet. I think gotcha. there's, a, there's a pullback that's going to happen because um, we've, we've seen this if we follow the history of it. Um, but I, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would do options on, on Bitcoin or Ethereum just because of the volatility and it's super speculative. So I would keep Bitcoin long-term. I obviously would keep Ethereum long-term. I have a little bit of both. Um, but yeah. I don't know if, I don't know if I would trade options on it. You leave it alone. Yeah. I think I wouldn't touch it, especially right after it. So I think April 24th is the date we said we're three weeks away from that. I think it, it's it got it, it dipped down to 63 um, over the course of the last two weeks, got back up to 70. Maybe it climbs a little bit higher, but I, I think there's a, there's a pullback that's coming and it could be a drastic one. We'll see. Um, so I'm not trading options on it. What, what will happen if it, it gets to a certain point, depending on how far it pulls back, if it follows this historic trend? Yeah, maybe we add a little bit more. Um, especially in Ethereum. I know when people look at the price, they'll say, oh, 60,000. Oh, that one's 2,500. Let me go with the 2,500. Yeah. Um, but if you know the space and you understand the functionality of Ethereum and how pretty much all the other altcoins have, have built something on top of it, not all, but majority, you, you'd understand this use case. So I'm not sure I, I trade options on it. Would you do um, options on any of the altcoins? Oh, definitely not. Gotcha. <laughs> definitely not. Definitely. It's not. okay to stay away. Yeah, 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 yeah. You got, you got to, you got to know. You just that I'm not, that I'm not participating yeah. in that. Yeah. Or if you got to choose to do so, please do one or two contracts, and don't let it be the last of your money. Please. You want me to answer you. What? You want me to answer the question? Of what? If you're trading uh, options in, in Bitcoin and Ethereum, where you, where can you even trade options in Bitcoin? You're, you're, some, you're talking about the ETFs, right? Yep. Yeah. They, they allow you to do that though. It's, it's yeah. still new. Usually yeah, you they do, to make you, you wait. You can. You sure? Yeah, you can. Yeah. yeah. I looked at it. Um, okay. Next option masterclass next Thursday. Surprise. We got a surprise. <laughs> we got a surprise for well, that class. EYO Universe. <laughs> masterclass. Thursday. Call you 51. Next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Circle your calendars, ladies and gentlemen. Um, April 11th. All right. Well, this, this, We're back. This, this has been educational and it's been uh um, something that is uh needed. I think we touched yeah. on some some social topics that was necessary. We talked about branding and marketing. Talked about politics. Gave some good insight on trading. Yep. Um, Joe Biden day one at Invest Fest. Trump day two. Got you. Perhaps that you know that would be crazy. I mean, they both need to stay, right? You know, it would be even crazy if we could have a presidential debate. That would be insane. That would be insane. 
legendary. I think she's an Umar hosted. <laughs> <laughs> Any anything is possible, man. You never know, yeah. man. You know you, you gotta can't. shoot for it. You never know, man. We've we've done we've done some pretty impressive things in the past, so yeah. that's not out of the realm of possibility. I'll make a few phone calls. Um, Joe Biden on Saturday, Donald Trump on Sunday. That'd be fire. They both would be finished with their conventions. Might be any. Wouldn't be bad. Hmm. Votes are needed. Gwinnett County, Alpharetta. <laughs> Important county. We need you. Let's show up. ATL. Yeah. Georgia. What's up? Yeah. I mean, I think that's a good lesson though, and, and doing the work in every area until you have a guaranteed win. Nobody can take this election for granted. Like it's not like how it was last time. Um They're saying that he's gonna campaign in New York because he thinks that he has a chance to win in New York. Donald Trump. You know, Republicans usually just ignore it in New York. New York, yeah. California, there's no chance of winning if you're a Republican. So it's like, why even waste money, right? Don't even focus yeah. on that. Go to go to Ohio and Florida. Um, but I'm hearing from inside sources <laughs> that um <laughs> He thinks that he has a, a good chance of winning New York, so he's going to actually campaign in, in New York. Hmm. <laughs> Lower taxes, maybe able to get it done. Man. We need it. We need, we New York need it. is crazy for everything. New York, New York going crazy right now. Subway. Subway is going crazy right now. I saw the mayor yeah. of the breakfast club talking about that. They got yeah. women getting punched in the face. Have you seen this? It's a, it's a trend of women. Yeah, it's crazy. Punched. No, it's crazy. I saw a woman got, they broke her jaw in three places. What is this, like a gang initiation? Or I have doing? no clue, Who's man. Who's doing this? Just oh. random. It was a, I, it was on the news, a random act, man. It's crazy. Just, did they just run up to women? Not even running. Like, the woman was just walking walking by. She was a uh, a crossing guard for the school. She was just walking back to the house. The zoo just punched her, like, broke her jaw. Like, crazy. It's, like, a, it's a thing. It's been happening. Protect our women, you know, man. I remember years ago when I was in high school, it was a thing where um, people was getting slashed in their face. On the train, yeah. it was like it was like gang initiation. Um, Crazy, and they they was cutting people's faces, random like random just people that was just cutting their faces, and now they're punching people in the face. What is this? What is this world coming to? Insane, y'all. Eric Adams, your time off. What's over with my boy? <laughs> that that Breakfast Club interview was pretty interesting. I didn't watch it. You watched it? I watched half of it. It was pretty. I yeah, watched part of it. Yeah. Wow. wow. It was um, good or bad? It was comfort. It there was a lot of confrontation up there. Charlemagne. It wasn't with him. He he, he had a um a young lady up there, and I don't want to mispronounce her name, um, but she's actually a Democrat as well, and she had some points about programming, about policing, that he kind of immigration. Well, Breakfast Club brought somebody up there to talk to him. Yeah, and it was Charlemagne was kind of there with her. Um, yeah, it was it was a good one. It was a good one. I was like the clip. First captivated me. Then I said, let me go watch a little bit of this. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Shout out to Charlemagne, man. Yeah. Always, always um, thought-provoking conversation for sure. Oh, absolutely. Charlemagne the God Show. <laughs> Shout out to Charlemagne. Good brother. Ah. Uh, the God Show. Uh, <sighs> nah, 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 nah. Shout out. <laughs> Yo, Rose. Yo, Rose, what's good? See that? Rick Ross. I'll follow the boy. Switch sides. Come on, man. On gang. Damn. But, but um, so but, 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 but uh, bro gotta stop. He gotta stop mingling with with, with uh people's exes. Not yeah. cool. Not it's, cool. It's, it's becoming a thing. If you choose to go to war, the women off limits. No, I guess not. But it ain't I war. We always went out, they wasn't at war. A tweet is even goofy. Get direct to calm down, my boy. Tweet. <laughs> what tweet? No, he, he, um, Metro put out that tweet, two sides, and then the next day, Ross unfollowed him. And then that same day, then he gave the tickets to the, the girl to come. Yeah. We don't trust you. We don't trust you. So, um, that's why, because great music is now being sacrificed. We don't trust you. You know what I'm saying? Before we leave, yay. That boy, yay, man. That boy, yay, is back at it, man. Before we leave, this is the last thing. <laughs> For all you people that I hate when we talk about these things, it's the end of the show, so you can check out if you if you like to. Last Republican, real uh, quick. Last Republican to win New York was uh, uh, Reagan. Yep. So okay, this is from this is from the desk of Kanye. 
Everyone knows I watched Kendrick on No More Parties in LA. Can we start? Can we stop there? No, let me read the whole thing. <laughs> Every, everyone knows I watched Drake at the Free Larry Hoover concert. True. That's true. No, that's true. We was there. Everyone knows I brought Adidas into this culture and I took them out. Everyone they knows. I'm going to kick you out. Everyone knows Lada Dima, Dimia, uh, Virgil, Jerry, Kim, all worked for me. Sure. I made I made Yeezus, yep. Dark Fantasy, Pablo, Graduation, Throne, 808s. I made Runway, Devil in Devil in a Dress, Father dress, yep. Devil. He just said Devil in Dress, yeah, yeah, new dress. Yeah. Father Stretch Our Hands. Yes, classic. I am the only person to come back to number one after cancellation. I'll add this for him too. He's the only one to go number one in three different decades. Categories, yeah. Um, no, decades, 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 decades. He's the only he's the only yeah. rapper to ever 2000 go to, to 2010, 10 to 20, and now this one. And then he said, There's only one goat. Yeah, his name is Sean Cole. I stand with me. <laughs> My friends call me Ye. So is Kanye no the goat? No. Is Kanye no. the greatest of all time? Can you read the first line again? I watched Drake, I watched Kendrick. Uh, and no party, no more parties in LA. All right, if anybody yeah. knows, the, if you know the history of that song, then you know that Drake wrote that verse. So I'm not sure how you say he that. He watched a few other people and a few other songs. I didn't hear him mention Sean Carter in that entire Here's the thing. My father stretched my hands, Drake wrote that whole diatribe. I did not hear Sean Carter's name. So the question is, is Kanye the goat? No, and, the music. Goat. and I would have to say, you're gonna say yes, right? Of course, you are. No, we're not doing this. Shout out to Yeezy. I was yeah, easy on old boy. I'm not gonna be easy on this. So <laughs> no, he's not. Who the go? Father stretch my hands. Drink rope. No, no. no. Uh, now, I, what I will give him credit the for is that's comedy. Being one of the best in music, fashion. No one's done that. Like Steve Jobs couldn't even pull that out. Amazing. Yeah. But no, it's not better than Drake. Like, it, it, Here's why. Here's why he's the goat to me. And is he? Are you you're talking music? Well, he's talking about fashion, so it's all around, right? But his coach, he has the biggest cultural influence of ever. He's the only person that, to actually be able to take over multiple different genres at the top. He was the top producer, the top rapper, the mm -hmm. top in fashion for our, our culture. That's all facts. It's not. It's not debatable. Someone uh, argue the top hater to Virgil too. We're gonna lie, no. Well, I mean, of course. That's Before that boy died, he wasn't fucking with Virgil. But Virgil comes from his tree. Brought him the tears. Virgil, when he's, Virgil comes to his comes from his tree. Them tears I, are jealous. That's what I'm saying. If he comes from your tree, then you should be proud of him. You shouldn't be envious of him. Well, we know that comes yeah. from, we know he has issues. All right, all right. Um, that's your goat. I ain't that's it. He's <laughs> the goat. <laughs> no, that's, <laughs> that's your goat. Billy Goat. Five. He has more classic albums than any rapper. Why did he mention Jesus? Oh, that's my not God. a classic. Oh, okay, hold on, hold on. That's not I'll a classic. Drop, drop out of the drop out. Oh, yeah. no. I'll drop out. Graduation. College dropout, graduation. No, no, no. Late no, no. Late registration is a classic. He has okay, that's more three. classic albums than any rapper in history. We already went over this. It's, it's tied between Twisted him and Dark Jeff. Fantasy. Classic. Probably the best. Watch the Throne. We had six. We had six Watch classic. Watch the Throne was cool. Not a lot of Not no classic. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. That's what song number five? On um, which one? Listening to what's Watch the throne. number five? Oh, this is four. Um, <laughs> yeah, what what you need is five. What you need is five. What you need? Ain't that just like LeBron James? Ain't that just like D-Wade? Yeah, that throw, that Come throw, on, man. That throw Don't do that. You know music. I'm a... Come on. You ready? <laughs> it's great. It's not a classic. It's a classic. That's... So he's... He has, him and Jay. They got the most. He has a strong... Him and Jay. You know, my, my top three is, is Kanye, Jay-Z, and Drake. That's fair. For all around... All yeah. around, oh, yeah, that's, around. Fair. that's fair. All around performance, everything, everything that you you count. I'm going to see the boy on Ooh. Friday. Kanye? Not nah, Drake. Drake. He with my guy. Him and Wayne. They they in New York. I gotta go see it. That's no, I'm, a, I'm a concert guy. Yeah. Shout out to Drizzy. Shout out to to Dwayne. One of the greatest of all time, but go to music. Eh. Nah. nah. One, one Shout out to Beyonce. Crazy. Number one country album. Cowboy Carter. <laughs> she has reinvented herself again. 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 What do you think? Yeah. At, She's that's a great brand of years ago. Yo, you what you think? Every Act couple years. She's the go. Act one was was like kind of a techno like house vibe. House, house, vibe, music, yeah, house yeah. music. This one's country. What you think Act Three is gonna be? Reggae tone, if she's smart, which I know she Good is. Facts. Obviously, a very Afro beats. 
Be- yeah. Avril Beats. Danielle, Danielle Avril- we had this conversation this morning. Danielle said she thinks it's going to be a rock album. Oh, uh, she think? I would go. I can I, see it, but the, the, Afro the, 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 the hottest two genres out right now is Afro Beats and Reggaeton. So yeah. she's already done Reggaeton. Yeah. Hell yeah. What? Yeah. That that's not even a genre no more. They got rid of that. Bad Bunny. But Benito. That's not reggae. That's not reggae. That's, that's, that's not really reggae. Yeah, that's reggae tone. Yeah. 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 It's not. I, hate I call it reggae tone trap, but they it's classified. It's not a reggae tone. Like reggae tone is reggae a tone. different sound. I mean, reggae reggae tone? Tone? Nah, just because he's no. What's the genre? I just think it's, it's Latin music it's at this point. No, like reggae. you go to the Latin no, music awards with that. I know enough. It's not the Nori reggae tone. We was playing. That's reggae tone. Reggae tone. That's the origin of it. Reggae yeah. tone is the origin of yeah, yeah. reggae music and dub that's track. Art, that, right? reggae, trust me, I that's know, not dub. This is not debatable. I know too no. many Dominicans. That don't that, mean nothing. That, 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 that means a lot. What are you talking about? You know too many Dominicans to say what? That I'm informed of what's going on. It's called reggae tone. This is the new yeah. iteration of reggae tone. That's uh, a fact. Okay. But it, it, yeah. it, in any, I think that's her, that's her direction. That or Afro beats. Yeah, she's, she's, she's done that a little bit on the Lion King um soundtrack. She went she went with the Afrobeat. So she's done that already. So I don't know if she does it again. She because she had a, all all the Afrobeats artists on the Lion King. She's done everything, but she hasn't done rock. Nobody's listening to rock. Some people. Yeah. Biggest reggaeton legends: Daddy Yankee, Anwell, Bad Bunny, Don Omar, Farruko, Nicki oh. Jam. Don Omar. Look look at that. Where's he at? GPT when you need it. So reggaeton is alive and well. And that is reggaeton. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's been real. Shout out to the queen. Uh, go cop the album. Anybody else drop? No. Worthwhile? Kendrick Lamar. Yeah, everybody worthwhile. <laughs> Yo. Kendrick. J. Cole, what we doing? Hey. Been seven okay, days, bro. boys. Where y'all at? Oh, Cold World, what we doing? I know you won't disappoint the gang. Yo, I know you won't disappoint the gang. I got my money on Cole. Nah, Cole. nah, shout out to the six. Shout out to all my fellas in the six. I got my money on Cole. Chubbs, I saw what you put out there, Chubbs. What do you put? I'm riding with y'all. And Baca. Y'all better quit playing. I keep I, telling you. Yeah, what the fuck man? Dude, Shub Knight. Yo, oh, light skin. He da da da. No, nah. Okay. Okay. Shout, sticks. Stop calling my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Some of y'all went to Toronto and they made hey, y'all safely. Hey, real quick, it. real quick. We, before we go, I got we, we got a shout out to the good folks at Adidas. Yeah. Shout out to all my people at Adidas, John. I appreciate all of the the merchandise. I know we said on Market Mondays that we really like the James Harden shoe and the Anthony Edwards shoe, and they sent yeah. us a pair. Ian, I got to ship them to you. I got some I upstairs for you as well. Yo, salute, Adidas. crazy Adidas, love, man. Appreciate y'all exactly. and the fair guard joints. Shout out to to, to Jerry. What's, Dan, the, what's, deal? Good, my what's boy? the deal? All right, y'all. Love, love.